Tonight, the FCC celebrates Groundhog Day. An ad blocker makes some shady deals with big companies. And we tell you who won the Super Bowl, according to Twitter. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 266 for Monday, February 2nd, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Invest in yourself for 2015. lynda.com has thousands of courses to help you learn new tech, business, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. It's Groundhog Day, which means it's the day that the FCC chairman, Tom Wheeler, pops his head up to see if his net neutrality shadow is there. According to several news sources, Federal Communications Commission chairman Tom Wheeler will call for an expansion of his agency's authority to regulate mobile and fixed broadband providers, which means the FCC will treat the Internet as a utility and forbid ISPs from slowing down traffic intentionally. In other words, Wheeler will propose that the government treat Internet service like a public utility. Wheeler is set to formally announce his proposal on Thursday. Now, we all know that Google is working on a self-driving car, and we also know that Uber is a ride-sharing service. Today, we learned that each company is getting ready to compete with the other. Google is launching an Uber-like ride-sharing service, and Uber is working on a self-driving car. Here's how we know. Google's chief legal officer, David Drummond, is on the Uber board of directors. According to a Bloomberg business source, Drummond informed the Uber board that Google may launch a competitor to Uber, and he showed them a Google ride-sharing app currently being dog-fooded by Google employees. Uber may ask Drummond to resign from the board. Meanwhile, TechCrunch is reporting that Uber has begun planning a new research facility in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to develop a self-driving car. The report says Uber has hired more than 50 scientists from Carnegie Mellon University and the affiliated National Robotics Engineering Center. Either way, it looks like we're facing a future where it's easy to get a ride and impossible to get a job as a driver. In other news, Obama released a $4 trillion budget proposal today that included a big focus on cybersecurity. The president has earmarked $14 billion to defend federal and private networks against hackers. Now, this all sounds great, but it remains to be seen how much money will be set aside for cybersecurity when the Republican-controlled Congress for, by the Republican-controlled Congress in the next fiscal year. Now, have you heard of Adblock Plus? It's a browser inst- extension that lets you surf the web without all those annoying ads. According to a report in the Financial Times, Adblock Plus has been making paid deals with big companies to let their ads through. Russell Brandom reported this story for The Verge, and today we asked him to come talk about it with us. Hi, Russell. Hi. So, Hi, great to be here. <laughs> thanks for coming. I know you're on the East Coast, and it's later there and snowing. Uh, tell us what Adblock Plus is. It's true. So, yeah, Adblock Plus, um, you know, it's very similar uh, to a number of Adblock programs. Essentially, it's sort of the bouncer for your browser. You tell it, you know, let the web page in, but keep all the ads out. Um, and yeah, this, you know, this latest report from the Financial Times sort of suggests, well, they were slipping the bouncer some money to get in the door. Ah, so what? So what companies were doing this? The big three were Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. One of the others that was slightly less well known is t- it's called Taboola. You've probably seen. Uh, you know, at the bottom of a website, if you see, uh, you know, eight pictures of sort of re- recommended links from around the web, and it's usually sort of fairly, uh, shall we say, low quality content, um, that's usually from Taboola. And it can be a very lucrative way for sites to make money, but not if Adblock decides it's an ad and decides not to show it to you. So these companies were paying money to get their ads seen despite this blocking software. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I think from Adblock Plus's perspective, it looks slightly more complicated. They sort of had this program of, well, if you work with us, we can make sure that you're not making bad intrusive ads and you're only making good ads that respect our users. And sort of by communicating with these people, we can sort of help 
uh, steer the advertising industry towards good ads. That was sort of their claim. And they had a whole page of their site about this and was, were encouraging users to sort of leave this setting open. But what they weren't saying was that while, it, while that program was free for most small companies, any large company, they would at a certain point ask them for money, which was the way that they were funding this whole project. And so then you start to wonder, well, how much leverage did they really have with this? Or was it more about the money and less about the leverage maybe? And the whole sort of program starts to look very different. Yeah, so so it's called like the acceptable ads program. So as, exactly. as a user of AdBlock Plus, I know this exists, and I can either it's default set it on or do is it default to set off for the acceptable ads pro program? Um, I believe it's default on, but then they they also sort of if you go in, they'll say, listen, you know, they they have a whole spiel about how you know really the right thing to do is to leave it on because they because they you know can can advertise. Uh, influence the advertising industry in this way. So small companies Which, could, could be could have their ads for free, but bigger companies were having to pay. Yeah, and I also think there's a question of how the influence was really working. Like I think if you're a smaller company and Adblock Plus has, you know, hundred more than 100 million users, um, if they come to you and say, listen, you know, make your ad in this certain way and then we'll let it through, you're very likely to listen. I think if they come to Google and say that, Google's likely to tell them, well, listen, <laughs> if you want to keep making a Chrome plugin, I mean, just, just the sort of balance of power is very different. I don't, it, I think it's much harder to tell Microsoft what its ads should look like or tell Amazon. Even if you're a very popular plugin, they're very powerful companies. And so it starts, well, once, you know, they're paying you this money to participate in the program, what leverage do you really have over them at all? Right. Interesting. Now, is is there a better ad blocking software? Does all ad blocking software do this, or are they unique in this? Well, this is the concern. So it had actually been previously reported that Google was doing this with Adblock Plus specifically. Um, there are lots of different ad block programs. Most of them have some form of a whitelist, right? So that's the you know acceptable ad programs is a recommended whitelist of these ads are all right. They're on the they're on the guest list. Um, and, you know, is it possible that any other ad block program has the same deal? You know, most of these are free programs. They need to raise money somehow. Um, I'm sort of hesitant to say, well, Adblock Plus is the only ad blocker that's doing it, just because I think it makes a lot of sense for a project like that as a way to make money. Right. So do you recommend that people use ad blocking software or should we just suck it up and read what we're reading and appreciate that someone's paying for it? Well, right. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm here also as an employee of TheVerge.com, which has many lovely advertisements and, and wonderful advertisers and you should buy all their products. <laughs> so I don't want people to use ad blocking software. No, I mean, it's, it's, and I mean, not to get on too much of a high horse about it, but yeah, I mean, we have this media, we have these programs, uh, you know, uh, we have to pay for it somehow. We're not asking you to, to buy a subscription. So, you know, thinking about, um, in general, I also, you know, I, I do think as a security writer, having strong permissions on your browser about flash and plugins and sort of JavaScript and everything of that nature, which ends up disabling a lot of ads, but not all of them. Um, I am a fan of, of having those permissions set pretty tightly just because you don't know what's out there. Right. We're not just talking about, you know, ads. We're talking about pop-ups that might be malicious and we want to avoid them, right? Absolutely. So, but that, what you're saying is that's all built into the browser. We don't have to download an extension necessarily to do that. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Uh, um, and, you know, if Chrome were doing this, it would be an even bigger deal. So right. <laughs> we can catch them at it. I mean, and, and I think, yeah, I mean, I would, I would, I think it's a good idea to do these things at the browser level. Yeah. Okay. Well, what else are you working on? What are your next big stories that you're allowed to tell us about? Oh, gosh. Well, um, I'll tell you, we had a big thing today. Uh, there's a little bit of trouble at Foursquare, my colleague Casey Newton reported, and then I was talking about... Um, there are these lie detectors that 
uh, detect brain waves, and there's a real question over how well they work. And maybe it's just sort of one of these things where the guy comes into the courtroom and says, "I found this. I found this guy's brain. Uh, you know, I've seen that he's guilty." And then it's a whole big scandal. So the question of whether that technology actually works, I think we're gonna we're gonna be hearing a lot about in the uh, in the days to come. Cool. So that's the brain fingerprinting we've been hearing about. Indeed, yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. That was uh, Russell Brandon from The Verge, and uh, we hope to have you on soon. My pleasure. All right. Take care. And coming up, we have some more good stories for you today. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. It's already February. What are you waiting for? Invest in yourself this year and learn something new with a free 10-day trial to lynda.com. Lynda.com is used by millions of people around the world and has over 4,500 courses on topics like web development, photography, visual design, and business, as well as software training like Excel, WordPress, and Photoshop. Are you looking to sharpen your coding skills or design the next great app? Then I recommend lynda.com courses like Programming with iOS, Simple Android Development Tools, and Code Clinic, an innovative series where each month, lynda.com issues a code challenge and authors share their solutions using different programming languages. Whether you have 15 minutes or 15 hours, each course is structured so that you can learn at your own pace and on your own schedule from start to finish. And of course, all lynda.com courses are taught by experts who are accomplished professionals at the top of their field. So go ahead, do something good for yourself in 2015 and sign up for a free 10-day trial to lynda.com by visiting lynda.com slash TN2. You'll get unlimited access to every course on lynda.com, including access on your iOS and your Android devices, plus new courses as they're added each week. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2 to try it free for 10 days. Go ahead. I challenge you to learn something new. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. First, Sky Mall files for bankruptcy. And now Radio Shack, where has my childhood gone? Bloomberg Business is reporting that Radio Shack is pulling the plug. As of today, the 94-year-old company will no longer trade on the New York Stock Exchange and will close half of its stores. The company is currently in talks to sell the other half of their stores to Sprint. You know what would have made my college experience so much more fulfilling? If I could have ordered my ramen noodles from Amazon and had them delivered by next day air? Well, it's too late for me, but not for you, smarties, studying at Purdue University, the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and the University of California Davis. Over the weekend, the Wall Street Journal reported that Amazon signed deals with the three major universities to run co-branded websites to sell textbooks, college-branded clothing, and the aforementioned ramen noodles. Take that college bookstores, many of which who are owned by Barnes and Noble and charge ridiculous prices for textbooks anyway. But not everyone is excited about the deal, due in no small part to Amazon's antagonistic dealings with big publishing companies. The initiative is known as Amazon Campus, and it's most likely designed to hook smart kids like you into becoming lifelong Amazon customers. Tinkerers and makerers rejoice today with the release of the brand new Raspberry Pi 2, the credit card size microcomputer that can be hooked up to a monitor, keyboard, and mouse, and is great at teaching kids how to program. Raspberry Pi 2 is now on sale for $35, the same price as the existing Model B+, and it can run the full range of Linux distributions, including snappy Ubuntu Core, According to a post on the Windows blog, the new Microsoft operating system, Windows 10, will support Raspberry Pi 2, and it will be free for the maker community through the Windows Developer Program for IoT later this year. And finally, great Super Bowl last night, huh? Who played again? Was it hashtag like a girl versus the dancing shark or Missy Elliott versus crying dads? In case you're still not sure, TechCrunch is reporting that Adobe used their Adobe social marketing tool to rank the Super Bowl ads according to how much social buzz they created on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, Flickr, Reddit, and a bunch of other places. And in case you're interested, hashtag like a girl did win, followed closely by avocados from Mexico. If you want to see the whole list, you can find it on TechCrunch, and we'll put a link in the show notes. 
And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us, and we hope that you do, at TN2 at twit.tv. And watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.